It's time to export the knowledge. In this video, we're going to be doing a review of coordinate geometry. So we're going to be talking about distance between two points, midpoints. We're also going to talk about gradient and different forms and families of linear equations. So we're going to talk about uh, lines being parallel and perpendicular to each other and things like that. So let's start with uh, the distance of two points. So here is a graph and I have some point here and some other point here. A and here's point B. So I want to measure the distance between these two points. You know Pythagoras, you can know that I can make a right angle triangle and then I can work out the hypotenuse and that will be the distance between A and B. So there is a, a general form for this. So let's say this is A's coordinates. A has x1 and y1 and B is x2 and y2. So if this is the case, then we can work out what the distance of these two legs are and then we can find some sort of formula to work out the distance between the two. This bit here is just going to be whatever this number is here, which is x2, subtract whatever number is here, which is x1. And we know this because of the coordinates a and b. We can do something similar with the y2. Here will be y2, and down here will be y1. So the distance is going to be y2 plus y1. So this side here is y2 minus one and this side is x2 minus x1 then we can square them to get whatever this distance is we can use pythagoras our distance squared is going to equal x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared and then in your textbooks you'll see distance equal square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared and that's the distance equation so if you want the distance for any two points you can just plug in the coordinate and you can solve for the distance now you can do it the long way and do it Pythagoras if you want to, but it's a lot quicker if you just sub in the values into this thing. Okay, we're going to move on. We're going to move on to midpoints. So let's first uh, look at midpoint of two points here. So I'm going to claim the midpoint is somewhere here. If that's the case, how can we work out what the midpoint well, it's just a measure of center. And what's the measure of center? The average. So if we average the two x points, this is x1 and that is x2. If we average them, no matter what this y value is, it's going to be x1 plus x2 over 2. And that's the average. And then we'll just have whatever our y coordinate and that will be the midpoint of these two points assuming they're on the same y value now if they're not on the same y value maybe they're on the same x value so if there's something like this it's going to be somewhere here again y1 y2 they're on some constant value for x so the midpoint is just going to be the average of these two y values so we're going to have y1 plus y2 2 and that will be the midpoint of these two points now that's a very limited range that we can actually find the midpoint and that's why we can generalize it if we have two points any two points we can find the midpoint say the midpoint is there and all we have to do is we average x coordinates and the y coordinates and whatever they are, just two new points, they will line up perfectly to the actual midpoint. 
just we slap them together. And instead of this constant value for the x or y, just have the average. And this will hold true to our constant case. If we average two of the same number and then divide it by two, we will get that number again. That's midpoints. Now I want to talk about gradient for a bit. So you may recall that the gradient of some line is just rise over run. And that's the general form. And we say that M is the gradient. So M is rise on run. Now, maybe you don't have uh, a very nice right angle triangle that you can just draw onto your graph. Maybe you just have two coordinates and maybe they're kind of messy. Maybe you have something like root two plus one and just root three, something like that. If you have messy numbers or you just don't have some sort of visual representation, you can use the same logic that we applied to the distance formula. Work out what the run is and work out what the rise is. Think about it. There's y2, there's y1. Subtract them, that'll be our rise. y2 minus y1 over and if we want the distance our run it's going to be x2 minus x1 and that there is the formula for gradient pick any two points and you can get gradient out of it okay now i want to talk about different forms of linear equations y equals mx plus c so this is the gradient intercept form. So the name being that you know the gradient and you know the y-intercept. If we were to draw this, say so that is C, our line will go through it at a gradient of M. And there's also the intercept form. So we have X over A plus Y over B equals one. This is, is that we'll have an X-intercept at A and a Y intercept at B. So we'll have a line going through like that. There is also one other form that you should be aware of and this one doesn't make a whole lot of sense until you actually look at the gradient. So if we get M equals Y2 minus over X2 say X2 was just equal to X and y2 was just equal to y, so we have some sort of general form. Get this, m equals y minus y1, x minus x1. Now if we solve for y minus y1 and just times to get rid of the denominator, we get this new form. y minus y1, m, lots of x minus x1. And what I've done in doing this, is that for any line with gradient m, it will go through, no matter what, the point x1, y1. This is known as the point gradient form. So if you have a point and a gradient, you can work out whatever line, whatever line you're referring to using this form. Okay, I want to talk about lines that are parallel to each other. So let's look at uh, y equals mx plus c first. And we have a gradient of 4x, and we'll have our intercept at one. So if we draw that, have one, and let's say that, that there, that's a gradient of four. Now, if we also plotted y equals x minus one, let's say minus one is here, and we go at the same angle, they will be perpendicular. What's similar about these two equations? They're both the x and y, y system, and they have the same gradient. Now this is the key point. It doesn't matter what the intercept is, two lines will be parallel to each other if and only if the gradients are the same. Right? If we want to talk about something that's particular, let's say, I have the equation y equals 
times x and y equals negative x. These two lines are perpendicular. It's pretty obvious to see that. There they are. They're perpendicular. Two lines are perpendicular if and only if their gradients when times together equal minus 1. So I can have 4x and negative a quarter and these two lines will be parallel. And it doesn't matter what constant I add to these two equations, they will always be perpendicular at some point. You have three, you take the inverse, which is one third, and then you change the sign. So because this is positive, it will become negative. Started with negative three, we'll go to negative one third, and then we'll change it to positive one third. Now I want to talk about families of equations. So if we have a graph like this, and we draw a line, and let's say uh, all these lines are in the form y equals mx, right? So we can have a line like that, we can have a line like that, like that. All I'm changing is the gradient. As long as the only thing that I'm changing is m, all these lines here that I've drawn are a family of y equals mx. Now I can change this a little bit and add some constants. So then line will shift. And let's say that's c. You could also say we have equations in the 3x plus some constant. If that's the case, we'll always have a gradient of 3, but it will be a different y-intersection. And these are also a family of linear equations. This time, c is the value that I'm changing. The value that I'm changing has a special name. The parameter parameter of y equals mx, m is the parameter. Family of equations x plus c, c is the parameter. You may recall in a previous video that I talked about simultaneously solving different equations, and I mentioned that sometimes you'll have lines that never meet, being parallel, or you'll have a lines that are on top of each other. So you have infinitely many solutions. So we're going to explore that concept a little bit more. Let's start with no solutions. So if any two lines are parallel to each other, so let's say 4x plus 1 and y equals 4x, these two lines will never meet. They're parallel, so there are no solutions. We, we can demonstrate this by using substitution. We'll set them equal to each other, 4x plus 1 equals 4x, 4x on both sides, cancel them, 1 equals 0, now that can't be right, so that means they are never equivalent to begin with, there was a proof by contradiction there, if we have two equations that are the same, so you might have something like x plus y equals 1 and 2x plus 2y equals 2. Now these two equations are exactly the same. We can demonstrate this by dividing this equation by 2 and we'll get x plus y equals just the other equation. So if we have something like this, how are we meant to represent a solution? Now this is where we introduce a new symbol. This symbol is called lambda. And it looks something like that. That's lambda. It's a Greek symbol for an equation like uh, y equals 4x and 2y equals 8x. If I wanted to represent the solutions of simultaneously solving these two equations, because I know these two equations are the same, I can just focus on this one and explain the solutions for that. Now, since there isn't one solution for this equation, 
we will let y equal lambda. So when we do that, we'll say lambda is 4x. And then we solve for x. So x equals lambda over 4. So now when I want to say the solutions for this equation, I say lambda over 4, comma, lambda. And that is all the solutions for this equation. So you can say that for all lambda, this is the solution to the two equations. Now on your CAS, if you manage to put in equations like this, you'll see the CAS do something like C1 instead of lambda. Just remember that this is lambda. This is just some constant. You keep that in mind. You can use the CAS like you normally would to simultaneously solve. You get something like that. CAS is telling you that the two lines are the same. Now there are two more things that I need to And that is two special lines, one vertical, one horizontal. And the one vertical here, if we want to talk about this line, it's going to be x equals some constant c. There's c there. We say that this line is undefined because y has nothing to do with it. No matter what y is, x is always c. However, if we look at this line and say that's also c, then the equation is y equals c. And we can say, well, that's just in the form mx plus c, where m is equal to 0. So we call this horizontal line a zero slope line, because you can see there's no x component. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or contact me on social media, and I will see you in the next video.